The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board says it plans to introduce self-service registration outlets in Abuja and Lagos State in order to leverage the digital competence of computer literate candidates. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, gunmen attacked the Okene Area Command of the Nigerian Police Force in Kogi State in the late hours of Sunday. According to a statement by the Commissioner of Information in the state, Kingsley Fanwo, the armed men were up to 30. Mr. Fanwo, however, noted that one of the gunmen was shot dead while others escaped with injuries during the attack. The statement read, the Kogi state government wishes to report that the Okene area command of the Nigerian police force was attacked by gunmen, numbering over 30, in the late hours of Sunday, February 6, 2022. However, they were shown the strength and efficacy of the Kogi security architecture as the local hunters, men of the state vigilante service, collaborated with other security operatives to spontaneously foil the attack. At number 9, bandits attacked a Catholic parish in Chawai, Kauru local government area of Kaduna State on Sunday night. The parish priest, Reverend Father Joseph Shekari, was kidnapped by the terrorists. It was gathered that the attackers killed a yet-to-be-identified cook working in the parish house during the attack, which happened at about 11.30 p.m. The incident was confirmed to newsmen on Monday by the paramount chief of the Chawai chiefdom, Yaya Muhammad. The cook that was shot dead was reportedly a student of a government secondary school in Kizakuru chiefdom. At number 8, the Lassa fever outbreak claimed 40 lives in January 2022. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control disclosed this in a situation report on Sunday. The center said the 40 deaths represented a case fatality rate of 19.0%, lower than the CFR for the same period in 2021, which was 22.2%. The NCDC report also showed that 211 cases of the disease were recorded out of a total of 981 suspected cases. The health agency said in total, 14 states had recorded at least one confirmed case across 43 local government areas. At number 7, the Presidential Amnesty Program has revealed that it has prepared an additional 1,500 former Niger Delta militants for single-digit interest loans offered by the Nigeria Incentive-Based Risk Sharing System for Agricultural Lending. In a statement by the Interim Administrator of PAP, Milan Dikyo, on Sunday, the beneficiaries were counseled on how to use the loans to become successful entrepreneurs. The training held at designated centers in Delta, Rivers, Bayosa, and Akwaibom states was in continuation of a program for Nisal loans, which PAP commenced in November 2021. At number six, Olympics organizers reported 24 new COVID-19 cases related to the Beijing Winter Games in their Monday report. The new figures bring the total number of COVID-19 infections detected at the Beijing Winter Games to 385 since January 23, 2022. The newly infected people, who included 12 athletes or team members, were detected after 74,000 coronavirus tests were carried out on Sunday. Ten of the new cases were discovered among 142 participants who arrived in Beijing for the Games on Sunday. At number five, the federal government has insisted that female Muslim students are allowed by the Constitution of Nigeria to wear hijab in schools. The Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, said this on Sunday amid the ongoing crisis over the religious garb. While delivering his keynote address at the 2022 World Hijab Day public lecture, the minister called for dialogue on religious differences rather than resorting to violence, adding that citizens should be allowed to practice their religion. He said the wearing of hijab by Muslim women is in line with the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, as recommended in Quran 3359. At number four, the Nigerian army has said that Islamic State of West Africa province terrorists and their families have surrendered to troops of 25 Task Force Brigade in Dambua, Borno State. The army disclosed this in a test statement on Monday. The army said the fighters and their families numbered 104, with 22 males, 27 females, and 55 children. The statement read, Breaking, I saw fighters and their families numbering 104, comprising 22 males, 27 females, and 55 children, surrendered to troops of 25 Task Force Brigade Dambua, Borno State, on Saturday, February 5, 2022. At number three, two more dead bodies have been recovered 
from the floating production storage and offloading Trinity Spirit oil vessel, which was engulfed by fire at the Upokiti terminal last Wednesday. The recovery was announced on Monday by the management of Sheba Exploration and Production Company Limited. On Sunday, the company had announced that three persons had been rescued while one dead body was recovered. Giving another update in a statement on Monday, the Chief Executive Officer, Sheba Exploration and Production Company Limited, Ikeme Funa Okafo, said two additional dead bodies were recovered on Sunday. At number two, the police commanding Enugu State says the mop-up screening for applicants in the ongoing 2021 recruitment of 10,000 constables have been extended. The screening, which involves physical and credential screening across all 17 local government areas of Enugu, has been extended to February 8, 2022. In a statement released by the command's spokesperson, Daniel Undukwe, on Monday, the police said, Successful applicants in the ongoing 2021 recruitment of 10,000 police constables into the Nigeria police from the 17 local government areas are hereby informed that date for the mop-up exercise of those who have not been screened has been extended to Tuesday, February 8th. Finally, at number one, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board says it plans to introduce self-service registration outlets in Abuja and Lagos State in order to leverage the digital competence of computer literate candidates. JAM disclosed this in its weekly bulletin on Monday. According to the Commission, the self-service registration is expected to reduce crowds at accredited computer-based test centers in both cities. It also explained that the idea is to advance the digital competence of candidates who can do the registration on their own. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.